The goal for this video is to give you a comprehensive overview of the Java technology stack. By the end of it, you will learn the different editions of Java that are available, where to start learning Java and a solid plan to learn the various Java APIs and frameworks. And also, you will learn about the various certifications you can do while you are learning the various Java frameworks. It all begins with Java Standard Edition, that is the first edition of Java, which allows you to develop standalone desktop applications. So when you start writing your first Java program, the Hello World program, you will download the JDK, the Java Developer's Kit from Oracle. You will install it on your machine. Then you write your program, compile your program into bytecode using the Java C. So when you download the Java Standard Edition or the JDK, you will have tools like Java C, which allows you to compile your programs, and then the JRE. The JRE stands for Java Runtime Environment, which is made up of JVM, the Java Virtual Machine, and all the libraries that you can use in your program, the collection API, the input-output streams, etc., all are part of the JRE. So you compile your program into bytecode using these tools, and then you run it using the Java Runtime Environment. This portion is called Core Java. That is where you will learn the language basics, like the syntax, for loops, conditional statements, etc., which every language has, and then the various libraries, inbuilt libraries, which Java provides, like collections, input, output streams to read and write files. The current version of Java Standard Edition is 8. With every version of uh, JDK, the language keeps getting better, and our job uh, keeps getting easier, and also a lot of new and cool APIs are being introduced by Oracle to develop some cool applications. As I said, we can only develop desktop applications using Core Java once you have the Core Java skills. A very good example of a Java desktop application is OpenOffice from Apache, which is very similar to Microsoft Office, but it is free and it is very cool and easy to use. While you are learning Core Java, you can do the OCJP certification. I suggest you do it parallelly as you learn Core Java. That way, all the fundamentals and basics will be solid. There will be no gaps. With your Core Java background, once you have a solid understanding of Core Java, it's very easy to learn the next edition of Java, which is JEE, Java Enterprise Edition. The current version of it is 7. You will not download any software and install it when we talk about JEE. JEE is comprised of a specification and an API, Application Programmer Interface. We just learn this API. It is a collection of interfaces if you are familiar with interfaces and classes, we as programmers will only learn this, the interfaces in this API. And then the actual implementation, the actual classes are provided by application servers. We write some classes and the application servers are responsible for running those classes on the server and sending the response back to the client who, who accesses our application from the browser. Specification is nothing but a set of rules written in plain English. They again are for the application server developers. So we build applications using our skills which we have learned here and a little bit of API that we learn here and then we deploy our applications or we put our applications on application servers like WebLogic, WebSphere, JBoss. Those servers are responsible for running our application and sending the response back to the browser whichever client is accessing our application using the browser. So we can build web applications, enterprise applications like Amazon.com, Facebook.com, banking applications applications for hospitals, etc. with these skills here and here. So the application servers use the JDK to run. They are written in Java, WebLogic, WebSphere, etc. They are all written in Java. They run on the JDK and they do all the services which our applications need. So in here, in JEE, you start by learning servlets, JSP and JDBC API. Servlets are as the name itself says, Java programs that run on the server. When a request comes from the browser, the application server will run the servlet program. Unlike your standalone applications where you have a main method, here you will have init service destroy methods. You can watch my servlet and JSP videos to learn more. You will learn that API here. JSP is an easier version of a servlet. It, it should be used to come up with your view pages. It's used to display HTML at the end of your uh, business transaction or whatever logic you want to write. JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity. 
it allows you to connect to your database and execute the various SQL statements, do all the database operations from within your Java code using JDBC. This portion of it is usually called advanced Java. When I do classroom trainings, these are this part is core Java and this part is advanced Java. There is no such term in the Oracle world, but this is typically used. Here you can do the web services develop sorry web component developer certification which again fills in any gaps you will have here and you will have a solid understanding and knowledge of this I strongly suggest you do certifications whenever you have time. Once you have the knowledge of these two you can simply build applications uh, web applications enterprise applications using this but there are frameworks which Oracle uses which makes our life a lot more easier JPA which stands for Java Persistence API allows you to write very less code and less SQL and we as object oriented programmers don't want to get into the database details write a lot of SQL statements so for us JPA allows us to use Java to easily communicate with the database underlying will be JDBC internally it will be using JDBC but we as programmers can access objects directly instead of writing SQL queries so you will learn that interfaces and how to use them here. So you will not be learning a lot of new syntax, a few annotations, few interfaces. Then comes JMS and Web Services. JMS stands for Java Messaging Services and uh, Web Services. They both solve similar problems. JMS uh, has uh, persistence and sorry, JMS provides asynchronous communication, persistence and all that. I will talk about that in detail later. But these two Web Services and JMS will allow you to build loosely coupled applications. Your applications can communicate with each other easily or the various components within your application can communicate easily. There are several videos on web services which I have done. I will add a few on JMS very soon. So these are the important frameworks in the Java and JEE space. The other version or edition of Java is Java Mobile Edition uh, which is used for Java mobile applications and also set up boxes like your internet uh, set up box or your cable TV set up box you can uh, write some uh, code using the JME edition that's all I'm aware of I have never used the JME version so quickly summarize up to here you start learning Java using the Java standard edition write a few cool desktop applications there then you will move on to JEE you will learn the servlets JSP and JDBC there are a lot of videos there on my YouTube channel here you will be learning only the API, the specification is for the application servers. Uh, Oracle along with the JEE specification and API provides an implementation of one of the application servers, a reference implementation called GlassFish, which is a reference implementation so that the other application servers can look at it to see how they can implement, how well they can implement the specification, their own version of the specification. We as programmers can deploy our applications on GlassFish as well and test our applications. There are two types of web services. One is uh, the SOAP based web services and the other is the RESTful services. There is a good video on my YouTube channel which tells the differences between those two. You will learn both of them. Again, as I said, you will learn a few annotations, few set of interfaces and few design principles and not, not much there. And you should know when to use web services, when to use JMS, how to use JPA, etc. Few other very famous frameworks which you would have heard about in the Java world or which you will hear about are Hibernate, Spring. Hibernate again is an implementation of JPA. It makes our job as Java programmers easier to connect to the database. We will not write a lot of SQL. We simply use the object oriented syntax and Hibernate generates the SQL on the fly and do the database work for us. It is an ORM tool, object relational mapping tool. Spring. Uh, there is no application today, no JE application today without Spring Framework in there. It allows you to uh, do dependency injection. So if class A depends on class B, instead of hard coding the dependency of class B in class A, Spring allows you to do dependency injection. Again, go watch my videos on Spring in injection to know what exactly Spring is. These JSF struts, GWT are the UI level frameworks. If you see the job openings, if you go to dice.com or naukri.com or any other job portal and type in Java developer positions, if you look at them, they typically ask for back-end developer or front-end developer or full-stack developer. So these are the UI framework technologies 
JSF Java Server Faces, Struts and GWT. Once you have this background, it is just using them, putting these in various classes and interfaces. That's all these three are about. So along with this, learn HTML and JavaScript. So be a solid JavaScript developer because there are a lot of JavaScript job openings out there and there are a lot of frameworks that are evolving around JavaScript to develop cool web applications. A certification you can do here is the business component developer certification and also here there is a certification for web component or web services developer certification which you can take. Once you are familiar with all these and you think you have solid understanding of all these frameworks and you have done a lot of projects then go for the architect certification. The, Sun, uh, the Oracle certified architect certification which pretty much summarizes all these and you will have the various design and architectural skills. So to summarize. There are three different versions of Java, Java Standard Edition, Java Enterprise Edition and Mobile Edition. Typically, as a solid Java programmer, you will start learning Java Standard Edition, the core language, then you will move on to the Java EE, you will learn the server side of it so that you can start building web applications and enterprise applications. Then learn JPA with Hibernate and Spring. Spring can be learned on its own or you can learn Spring and Hibernate and how you can use Spring with Hibernate etc. Then at the end of it learn web services. Okay. There are videos, a lot of videos that I have posted which will help you with it and I will be doing a lot of hands on videos in the near future. If you have any questions as always get in touch with me either on LinkedIn or shoot me an email.